Hello, this is the TI-84 guy. I'm back. Um, I have a, um, this is going to be a fairly short video. I wanted to go over a couple things um, concerning the um, the quadratic program that I wrote for the TI-84 plus CE. Uh, I wanted to go, I wanted to show you two things that I think are, um, that are pretty important. Uh, and then um, I'm going to tell you how you can get a hold of the program. All right. <clears throat> now, um, I've already done this problem a couple times, but I wanted to show you a couple things, right? On the SAT, especially the SAT, um, you're generally going to be doing, um, there's a few options that they give you. One is they will give you a, let's say, a, a quadratic in the standard form, and they'll ask you either to factor it or put it into the vertex form, or they'll give you something in the vertex form and ask you to put it in the standard form or the factored form. So basically what they're asking you to do is to go from one form of the um, quadratic to another form, right? And as I've shown in, the, uh, in a couple of my other videos, which I'll make sure I, I link to, um, this program can definitely handle that, right? But in some cases, they'll act, actually ask you to solve the quadratic. And what they want you to do is either they want you to find the roots or they want you to find the vertex. So I've drawn a little picture here, right? I don't know if I can get all of this in here, but basically when you have a, ver when you have a quadratic, there's, there's one of two things that you're going to be interested in. One of the things that you're going to be interested in is where it crosses the x-axis. This is supposed to be the x-axis, okay? Um, so they want to know the roots, okay? So that's one of the things you should be able to do, should, should be able to find. In the other case, what they're going to be asking for is they're going to be asking for the vertex. They want the, um, they may ask you for the x coordinate, um, the axis of symmetry, or sometimes they'll ask you for the y coordinate, uh, the minimum, or if it's a maximum. Um, but so anything um, where they're asking you to solve something, they're either going to be asking you to find the roots or they're going to be asking you to find the vertex. So I wanted to show you that. So I, I, I've gotten two programs or two problems here. Uh, and as I mentioned, one of these problems I've already done before, but I wanted to show you exactly, exactly what it is that they, they want you to be able to do. All right, let me read this one. It says the equation above uh, expresses the approximate height in meters of a ball t seconds after it is launched vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. After approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground? So in this case, what we're doing is we're throwing the ball up and then the ball hits the ground. They want to know how long does it take to hit the ground. So what you're going to look for here, this is going to be the, the root. That's what we're looking for. So in this case, uh, let me grab my calculator. I'm going to cover up my nice pretty picture there. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to go to program and I'm going to go down to um, quadrate and pick that, press enter. And then I'm going to enter, it, it's in standard form, so I'm going to enter it. And now I'm allowed to enter um, decimal coefficients or fractions. And then B, the B term will be 25, the C term will be 0. So now, we're just going to choose option 4. So option 4 is the root. So it tells you 250 over 49, all right? So if you divided 250 by 49, that would be about 5.1. So the answer for this one would be choice D, okay? So in that problem, they're asking you to, to tell how long it takes before the ground hit, the ball hits the ground, which would be the roots. Now, um, that came from um, the SAT test number one. Now, I saw this problem and I thought that this was a perfect problem to go over because I remember when this originally came out, this is on the PSAT exam number one. Um, you can find it on the College Board website uh, if you look at the PSAT, they have a pra they have just two practice tests. Um, so this is from practice test one. I remember when this originally came out. I tried to do this problem um, without a program, and I actually it was I thought it was kind of challenging at the time. Um, the reason that I thought it was challenging is for one, you've got three equations here, 
and most of the time you're given only one equation. And the second reason, and I'll read this in a second, there's so many variables and constants in here that it's so difficult to figure out exactly what you're trying to do, right? But um, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to tell you exactly what they're looking for and then I'm going to show you exactly how to do it using your calculator, all right? So now, um, okay, it says an arrow is launched upward with an initial speed of 100 meters per second. The equations above, right there, uh, describe the constant acceleration motion of the arrow, where V sub zero is the initial speed of the arrow, uh, V is the speed of the arrow as it is moving up in the air, H is the height of the arrow above the ground, T is the time elapsed since the arrow was projected upward, and G is the acceleration due to, the, due to gravity. So it would be 9.8. So now, so Basically, you gotta you gotta figure out which one of these equations to use. You could use two of them, three of them, whatever. Um, what I realize is that if you really understand um, what's kind of going on, and you can get this into the vertex form, that basically you're going to have the answer for this. So let's look at the uh, question. So question number thirty says, "What's the maximum height from the ground that the arrow will rise to to the nearest meter?" So they want you to round it to the nearest meter, but they want you to find the y value of the vertex. That's what that represents. Now let's go to the other part. 31, it says, how long will it take the arrow to reach its maximum height to the nearest tenth of a second? So what they're asking for now is they're, ask, they're asking you for the x coordinate of the vertex. So if you can get this equation into the vertex form, then the, the uh, answers are there, right there. So that's what we're going to do. So. Uh, let me just write the equation that I'm going to use real quick. It's going to be v sub 0 equals uh, 100 t minus 1 half times 9.8 and then it's going to be t squared. All right, so that's what I'm going to enter. Okay, so I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to turn it on. Uh, I'm going to press enter again. Let me get this in there so you can see it. I'm going to press the standard. And for the um, leading coefficient, I'm going to put in, I'm going to type in everything. I'm just going to put a negative 1 divided by 2 times 9.8. That's the um, A term. The B term is going to be 100. And the C term, since there's no constant, you put 0. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into the vertex form. So I'm going to go option two, all right? And there you have it. It's in the vertex form. The x coordinate is 500 over 49. The y coordinate is 2500 divided by 49. So now all we have to do is put those in. So if I go 500 divided by 49, I get 10.2 and we're supposed to round this to the nearest tenth. So the answer the answer for this would be 10.2. All right. Now let's do this one. Uh, we're going to do. We're going to. Um, the y coordinate was 2,500 or 25,000. Excuse me. Divided by 49. And as you can see, that's 510.2040816. They wanted you to round it to the nearest meter, so it would be 510. We're done. Now, the reason that I wanted to show this is that if you go to the College Board website, they actually have a explanation of how to solve it. One of the first things that I wanted to point out is this is considered a difficult question, okay? The answer for the first one was 510, that's what we got, right? They wanted you to use one of these two methods, completing the square or um, using one of the other formulas. That's too much work. In my opinion, that's too much work. Um, next, on 31, uh, it's also considered difficult, and the answer is 10.2, which is what we found. And basically, it's just the um, it's just the axis of symmetry. It's just the x coordinate. So um, these are considered difficult problems. And I must admit, when I originally did this without the program a couple years ago, it did take me a little bit of work to figure out the answers. But with the program now. All you're doing is plugging it in and pushing buttons and writing down what you need to do. It is so much simpler and it's almost 
um, it's it's almost like shooting fish in a barrel so if you would like to get a a copy of this program there's a couple things please subscribe that's the first thing you have to subscribe a, pe a couple people are sending me emails they haven't subscribed they haven't liked the video second thing make sure you like the video I'm trying to reach as many students as I can I'm trying to help as many students as I can one of the ways that I can do that is by the likes on the videos get attention okay the other thing is send me your email and make sure it, it's spelled correctly. Um, you'd be surprised. I've gotten um, about three or four people sent me requests for the programs and they misspelled their email or they've left the email completely out. So please send me your email address. Make sure it's spelled properly. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you like the video and I'll get this to you as soon as possible. I, I've got there's a lot of stuff on my plate right now, but I promise you that I'll get it to you within a day, two at most. Okay, so be patient if I don't get it to you in 24 seconds, but uh, I will get it to you and, um, you know, um, just be patient. Um, also, I plan on putting out a couple other couple more videos before the end of the summer if I can but um, again I hope you see the value in this program I hope you understand why I think with when you select the right kinds of programs and take it in for the SAT or the PSAT or the ACT you're at such a huge advantage over your uh, other students all right um, so I'm gonna sign off and I hope you have a good day all right bye